Is this a, what day is this? It's mail it in Friday. Yeah, well, the dude the binds. This is Overdrive with Hayes, Noodles, and the O-Dog on TSN 1050. Here we go, Overdrive, off and running, TSN 1050 on the TSN app, your home smart speaker. Brian Hayes, Zero Dog, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. What's up? What's up? How we feeling? Everything's positive. Everyone's <laughs> in a good mood. Is that what it is? Every, listen, <laughs> all the teams in, in Toronto the city, are doing in the awesome city, right now. Where, where is their positivity? What range of the city is it in? Tell me. Well... The Canadian Open is on its way up soon, yes. right? That's yes. a positive. You got that going. The weather, beautiful weather. Very and it's going to be positive. beautiful yeah. through the weekend. So that's a positive. But, yeah, outside of that, you know, there's uh, it's not a good scene here for the Toronto sports teams. You know, the Leafs are in flux to an extent. There's reports that the Raptors really don't know which direction they want to go. <laughs> Uh, the Jays, obviously, we're aware of what's been happening with them recently. And then on top of it, TFC is they a put soap opera right now. <laughs> they just put up their hand and said, can we can we join the fun hold too? Hold right. my beer. Hold, hold my vape. <laughs> hold my vape pen. Dude, they got a guy. <laughs> they got a guy wheeling around with a vape in in unrestricted areas. and. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Like, is there a restricted vape well, noodles, area? Like, it would be like us going to that little area before we go into the studio at work and someone saying, look, man, you can't vape here. And then you just come back the next day and you're vaping. And then you're vaping in the studio. And then you're vaping around J Max office. And someone just says, <laughs> take your vape. Yeah. <laughs> like, get out. There's reports. We're talking about Bernard Desky, who will not be playing tomorrow. For right. Vaping. After, right. He, yeah, he called out Bob Bradley last week, went public. By all accounts, there's a mutiny. You know, it's it's just an absolute mess, and they're terrible. They, they, they're they not any good. They're dead last in the East. But I guess he's been vaping, like, on the plane, which I, I, I'm not even sure that's a team policy. That's like, you know, I think that's a Air the government Canada gets policy. involved. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, sorry, pal. You know, like, that's probably not going to fly. And in the locker room and it's you got it's a mess it really is a mess and uh i like we should probably put a poll up like which of these four teams the maple leafs the raptors the blue jays toronto fc feel like they're flying under the radar the most it, it's probably the raptors in fact i know yeah. it is because they've been out the longest and, and yet you know they're still looking for a coach windhorst is reporting they haven't made up their mind and if they're going to bring the band back or basically blow it up, might want to figure that out, you know, pretty soon, I would think. Um, Jays are playing, TFC's playing, the Leafs. I guess the Argos need to put their hand up and say, we're good. You know, we're in camp. Yeah. We're, we're, we're here and everything's all good. Everyone's on board with the Argos being a staple and a pillar of consistency. They so are, shout out to the Argos. They usually are pretty consistent. Yeah, they are. They're not like, yeah. they, you know, they come to play. Pinball, he knows what he's doing. Exactly. But they've got a, a really quality fan base. And, and like, to me, I you never worry about the Argos. You check in and say, okay, how's it going out there? But I don't, I think it's got to be the Raptors based on to the team, Brian. Like, they didn't, it's not like they underachieved or overachieved this this season, they kind of were just there at the deadline. We had this conversation, you know, Masai didn't sell off. If anything, he grabbed a player and it's like, we'll sort it out in the summer. They kind of landed where a lot of people expected the blue Jays, high hopes. The Leafs had a great regular season, get past the big hump and then fall flat in the second round. So there's some chaos. And then the G the Dubas stuff. So it's a lot noisier and TFC. You just mentioned, like, I don't even TFC is the know, worst. Like, without question, they get the highest payroll in MLS, and they're last in the East. They haven't made the playoffs in a couple of years. Ever since Greg Vanny left, it's been a disaster, really. Like, when right. Vanny left, it was like the ship began sinking, 
And well, the new guy was supposed to have all the answers. And by the way, the new guy is one of the players. Apparently, they hate his guts. And it's one of the players' dads. Well, and not just any player, the longest yeah. standing and the yeah. captain of the team, Michael Bradley, which it, it was always going to be an issue when you right. have a player no and a question. dad as the coach. I, I, I mean, I, it, it was never going to be seamless. There were going to be guys who were like, I'm not comfortable talking to you about anything anything well you can't nor should you you can't you can't talk like i was thinking about it before we came on is there ever been at the highest level so hockey basketball you name it baseball where the top dog like the 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 coach the manager and that and the son is on the team like I, i i i'm sure there has because i you know, especially in baseball, I think, you know, Ken Griffey Jr., maybe right. his son was, you know, something Kevin like that. Kevin Deneen played for Bill Deneen in Philadelphia. But how tough is that? Like, I do believe the Sutter brothers, like one Sutter brother coached another type of thing. Like, I wow, think there has to been. have happened. Yeah, there's six of them. But, I, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, like, I, I feel like that's just a recipe for disaster. The only thing I could think of recent was Dave Lowry taking over in Winnipeg and his son Adam is the third right. line center there. There's and an example tough. right there. And it's really tough. tough and it didn't go well. Like no, it really but- did and not that it was that relationship no. that caused the problem, but by all accounts with TSC, you've you've got a lot of players that don't trust Bradley. I think that was an issue with some of the previous players too, that right. Bradley's taking it right to his dad about what's going on in the room and you can't have that. Like, I hope that's not the case because I really like Michael Bradley. He's, he's had an unbelievable run, right? Yeah. He's had the greatest run in, in franchise history without question. You know, like, Hayes, you have to admit, whoever decided to bring in the dad as the coach, it, it's a piss poor decision. It's yes. just it, like to think that that was ever going to work to bring in the captain's dad. It's it's really poor judgment and, on somebody's part that made that choice. And remind Brutal. me, the ca- and the captain's not the best player anymore, right? No, he's, he's not. He's up in there the in tooth, age. and like that's the yep. that's the hardest part too. Like sometimes I, you know, I used to see it in minor hockey. The best player in minor hockey, the dad's the you know the coach, but and plays his son a ton. Well, yeah, you can see it because the son was the best player. Mm-hmm. Like. This is a scenario. It doesn't sound like the son is the best player, is the no. captain. Like, and now it's just, yeah, I don't want to use the word mutiny, but it doesn't sound very good whatsoever. No, it's not. And and to to further that point, noodles last year that was a big part of the issues by all accounts with the players was that Michael Bradley was playing every single minute. He never came off the pitch. Like Bob Bradley was playing his kid into the ground, and the guy is not like he's 22 years old. He's, you know, well into his 30s, <laughs> and the guy's just like, you stay out there, you know, like orange slices and yeah, half. Just, just you know, keeps waving them out. <laughs> yeah, you can't have it. And and now what you've got too, you've got two, you know, international players who have come over here, uh, the two Italians who are remarkably talented, and it was a huge get for MLSC to bring them over here from a promotional standpoint, marketing standpoint, and simply the way they can play. And the two of them, I think what likely happens a lot with MLS is you get big European players playing for massive clubs, including the national team, and they come over here and they look down on MLS, right? right. They're here, they're like, we'll take the money, and it's not that they're not trying, but they probably come in with a poor attitude. And it's not just these two guys. I think it's probably happened a lot. It's mail-in yeah. time. It's yeah. like it's MLS is not European football. It's not even close. Right. So you pay them a lot, and they show up, and they, they do their thing, and, and they haven't been performing that well, and now they're speaking publicly and kind of going out to coach, or Bernard Desky is, and he's out tomorrow, and they're last in the East. So anyway, more on that in, in uh, about an hour and a half. Josh Cloak will join us from The Athletic. There's a bombshell report, again, from The Athletic about what is going on behind the scenes and what some of the players are saying on the record, off the record, players-only meetings. Yeah, it's really it's That's really tough. an issue. Um, the Athletic, also our boy Jonas Siegel, we didn't get into his article yesterday, but Jonas was writing about you know, what's going on, the vibes down uh, at Maple Leaf Central. Right, with Dubas no longer running the show, and some of the comments from people anonymously were, I was taken aback. I have <laughs> what to be, the, like, the word heartbreaking and like well, some morning. Of these, like, Someone said on yeah, the re- like not on the record because <laughs> they didn't put their name, but I'm mourning 
Yeah. That they, Kyle Dubas is in here, and I'm like, are you guys serious? I think right that's now? asinine. I'm sorry. I think what it's asinine. What is happening down there it, like, with it, the Maple Leafs? That that is, I get it. Like Kyle, very well liked. We've we've gone over the Kyle situation, but you're right. I read the same article, and the tone of it, it was like it's it it's it's almost like you say somebody died around there. Yeah, it, it, you know, and that's Noodles, let's be honest. Like we all like each other very much. We yes. are like brothers. But if one of us got gassed, the other one, the other two would be like, man, you need anything? Let me know. And then the other message would be to the other guy saying, who's on the show today? Because we got a show to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's well, no a, seriously, there's the no show warning. goes on. Yeah. I, but you're right. The Leafs actually still have a team and they'll, you know, they're a very good team and they'll be fine. Yes, it it. It blindsided a lot of people, but I was I was taken back, agree, Brian, with some of the verbiage, like mourning and, oh, like, I get it, but, like, move on. You're still going to have a boss. You're still going to have a paycheck. You're still going to have things. It just might look a lot different. And, and again, contrary to popular belief in that situation, there are other good managers in the league. There's other good people, too. And Kyle will move on and land somewhere and, and take his his act over there, or his... his uh, talents well, well and that's why i'd have i have no issue with and i would totally understand in fact i'd be shocked if this wasn't the case if there was anxiety that change is coming because everyone knows the new gm comes in probably brings his own people sure like if that's what was pouring out of it was hey we're all kind of nervous here that we're not going to be here any longer because kyle's out yeah like i totally get that but this idea that like, you know, I, I need two weeks off because Kyle's, you know, I, I have to react to this. You know, I can't I can't walk into the building with Kyle not here. You know what? Man, that's like, I get props that he to, was their boss. Props but, to Kyle. People like the guy. But yes. Agreed. Some agreed. of the comments, like, what do, you, what do you mean? Like, people said, I'm well, in mourning. I think yes, it's Jonas, like, too, because Jonas, I was almost, I almost said Jonas a note and said, are you that source? Because I, I was, <laughs> I always tease him. I mean, Kyle, he loved Kyle, and, and we all did. But it's just still a, a scenario where you, you got to move on. I just thought the wording was really, really and no one puts their name on it, obviously, yeah. and and that's a part of the and that's to be expected because Shanahan still, you know, Shanahan's probably trying to figure out what's going on here. How are people feeling? It obviously would send shockwaves, of course. Right. But his contract was up, right? Like it. He said on Monday he may not come back based on his own volition. Exactly. Right? Not the contract expiring or not working out a deal. He may step away. And it didn't get resolved. One thing led to the next, and Kyle's out. And I understand the shockwave. I understand the nerves and the uncertainty of what's going to come in the future. That That is 100% understandable. But it couldn't have been that shocking to anyone. Like, if you got let go out of nowhere in December, shockwaves. Uh, right. For sure. And yet it just I, I feel like there's this this narrative going around about the Leafs that it's, you know, it's Bedlam and it's uh, it's Gotham City down there and no one knows what the hell is going to happen. And I just don't think that's a reality. You know, it's still an organization where the owners are in place, the president's in place. They're going to have to hire somebody. You know, they got to figure out what they're going to do with the coaching staff. I, I cannot fathom that. I will admit that. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. And I don't think it's fair to Keith if all of a sudden you're going to let him go in two weeks or a month. And if that's always been a foregone conclusion. I know, that, but if it does happen, me, Hayes, sometimes the timing is weird with a coach firing. You've seen, you've been around pro sports for a long time. There's just random times where all of a sudden a coach is just let go out of the blue. It happens. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Yep. And well, it, it's bad timing. But if a new guy gets hired and wants to bring in a different coach, that's what's going to happen. It's just one of those things in sports. Well, Sometimes in the middle of a summer when an off season, a coach just randomly gets fired. Well, Maybe it's it, for another guy. Who knows? But it's there's no fair time to get gassed. And, and, and you can also – there's no rush to do it. He, Sheldon Keefe isn't working till October, technically. Now, I, I get it out of He'd respect. He'd probably like to get a call I, or two I, I, from I a team it. that's looking for a coach, though. Come out on. of res, out of respect, 100%. But here's the thing. He's got another year on his deal, and you've got to figure out who the manager is going to be. And you say to the manager, do you like this guy? Because the manager might like him, might have a relationship with him, might know him. The new, Sorry, the new manager. 
So it's it's sometimes you get willed somebody. Hey, hey, this this is what comes with the package. And the other scenario is like, okay, if you don't like it, you can change it. You have the option to do it. I was looking at the Toronto Maple Leafs, their website. You can look at their you know management team or whatever. There's 110 people on there. Like you go through other teams. Like I, I went through Ottawa. So there was 43 people. Like they've got nothing but resources. They've got all these things. They're, they've got everything that you could ask for at your fingertips. So, yes, there's going to be somebody still driving the bus at the general manager's uh, uh, chair. But I agree, Brian. I don't think it's bedlam there. there there's, they've still got a lot of good people in place in a lot of critical areas. Well, so, and there's change, right? And it's right. happening at the end of the season, which is natural. Like when else would it happen? Like if, if this came out of left field right before the trade deadline, then yes, that's chaotic, and something something happened, and you, you should have to come out and explain yourself. Here, it's the end of the year. His contract was up. They've moved on from the GM. He's been here for five years. They didn't right. just hire him six months ago and then get rid of him. That's dysfunction. Like a yeah. five-year run, and then the contract expires, you move on. That's not dysfunction. It's like we've forgotten what – believe me, this team defined it for a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, we've forgotten what true dysfunction looks like. If you think <laughs> this is dysfunction. Now, if they hire someone that, you know, is not going to go over well and some of the names being interviewed or allegedly being interviewed will not go over well with Leaf fans. They won't. Sure. Um, but that doesn't mean they're going to hire them, right? Interviewing someone or reportedly interviewing someone doesn't mean you're hiring somebody. And wait till the dust settles. When they hire, they figure out what the coach is. They get through the off season, and you'll find out starting next year where things are at, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, and, it's too premature to really and, to claim, you know, that here we go. You know, it's Gong Show City again in Toronto, and the Maple Leafs are leading the charge. Agreed. And keep in mind, some of the names that get floated, those people are doing their own bidding. They're, they're leaking it to people and going, hey, I mean, because I'll, I'll guarantee you, and this is throughout the league, you hear names – where I'm like, there is zero chance that person's getting hired. But it's because this person knows this person and that, and, and you're like, where did that name come from? Well, it just, just so happens. Like, That's again, called a favor. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, some of those names, they may not have even interviewed. But it's just, right. you know, it's, it's floating it. And, hey, you know, throw my name out there. And, and, and believe me, you see it in every market. And now it's the Leafs' turn because they've got an opening there. So, right. You know. And it's the most public, right? Like if your right. name gets attached to an interview here, everyone in the hockey world is going to know it. There's no sneaking in uh, an interview right. or a public But everyone report. in the hockey world knows, that guy, what the, why is that name even there? <laughs> He's not Zero. getting his job. No. Right. Zero they chance. Laugh. But all of a sudden you call some is- pigeon that does a blog. And say, hey, say that I interviewed for that gig. And the guy goes, yeah, I'll do it. And it's just, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it doesn't mean you're actually that close. But, yeah. you know, I will say, you know, this is on both sides of MLS. I guess on these are three different tentacles of MLSC. These are the three teams they own. Is the Leafs, the Raptors, at Toronto FC. Like, how they put fires out does say a lot about how your program is run. And it starts at the top, right? And, and how the owners get involved, how they allow their people to work and the freedom to work. You know, with with TFC, it starts at Bill Manning's desk and works its way down. Obviously, at Shanahan with the Leafs, it's Masai with the Raptors. And, you know, they believe in those people and they have to filter it down and make sure that they put a product on, you know, the pitch, the ice of the court that that is going to play out, you know, appropriately in the future. But how you collectively as an organization get through a storm, and there's some storms, for sure, yeah. going on right now. I'm not downplaying that. It does say a lot about how you're built, right? And and like the the pillars of your organization and the philosophy in which you you put forth. Um, the same thing applies with the Jays here. Like there's you know the the vultures are out here, right? The vultures are out in terms of what's going on with this club. Uh, John Schneider. A lot of people are like he's in over his head. You know, they're not going to fire this guy, nor should they. It's it's a, they're in a storm. It's the first storm he's really had as a manager. Let's call it what it is. And right. and he's at the forefront of it. The team well, not He better tighten well. up, though. He better not have sure. any. But they just hired him. I, like I they, know. You, you're not going to give the keys to the car and then six months later say, wow, we really screwed that up. And sure, they've lost some ball games recently. Sorry, you're out. I mean, that right. to me would be a horrible look in terms of the hierarchy of the team and how they operate. 
Yeah, I, I think you, a lot of times management, regardless if you're a hothead or not behind the scenes, like you have to you have to be patient. Like I know you're 50. What are they? 51 games in now, the, yep. the Blue Jays. So you're just north of 50. You still got 110 games. Got left. a lot like of games left. A lot play. of games left. They got, but they have to get going. Like of you course. can't make excuses. They got to get going. Do. But, but the, it, Schneider's got to be better got to be a lot yeah. better and you know he's made some decisions recently that have been highlighted and they're negative ones like yeah. it's and, a, and one of them in particular very embarrassing what happened against baltimore last week yeah the Manoa. no question yeah. but you know these guys aren't hitting they're not pitching well and and things are going astray and yes mattingly's there and maybe you could argue mattingly was brought in as a, as a you know an option right as someone yeah. that, that could be there as a fall guy if need be i'm just saying like schneider came up for Montoya when they took off. Playoffs went the way it went. It wasn't great. This year started very well for them. They're in a storm. They're, they're in yeah. a slump. They're slumping and they're playing poorly and they're losing a lot of ball games. But if you're going to turn on a guy you've committed to because of a 12 to 15 game run, you were yeah, never committed weeks. to him anyway. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you got to allow Schneider and company to try to build their way out. And over a, the course of 162, if you believe in your club, then you got to give them a chance to get out of. You know, what's a slump? Now, in a month, could be a very different story, right? Subject subject to change for sure in a month. But I, I don't think it's the case right now. All right, Mike Johnson's coming up. Dallas survives, right? Yeah, Dallas your, survives. Joe Pavelski. Yeah. I told you, I love the stars. I've always had belief. <laughs> you love DeBoer and yeah. Spot. And, Spotter and all the boys down done. there. They got yeah. her done last night, and I was kind of happy for them. I thought they deserved that win, like they uh, they were the better team last night. They then they played well, and the goalie was solid. He didn't have to steal it, but you know Vegas kind of were back on their heels. That that wasn't Vegas's best performance, put it that they way. Need, and if things go and if things go south, you could maybe shove a pair of shorts, a pair of jeans, a, t- a bar tee, and you just say, "I'll be at my exit meeting in a few days." You right, if you lose back I'm in talking. Vegas, is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you if mean? I'm Dallas and there's a possible, I might throw a, I might throw some swim trunks in the bag. Never know. If things go wrong, you're just like, see you in a couple days. What, what's the uh, the day party there? Um, well, it's Wet it's, Republic. That's wet Republic, off, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been there, done that. It's quite Dude, a Dude, I just don't understand. Like, what could your expectation be for the evening if you have 30 vodkas in a pool? They're, like, they're, honestly. Yeah, there, there wasn't it. one for me. I'll admit, like, I, I checked out at a point where I was like, that's enough. Because it was the second or third day. You get there at, like, 12. You no, know, I'm like, aware yeah. of it. You're there at noon. You I, leave the place at 7 or something. By 5 p.m., you are crushed. It I, is <laughs> the wildest scene on earth. It, it, I, like, you talk about people watching. Go sit beside the entrance between, yes. like, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., where people are coming in flying, right? Everyone's like, all right, let's go. And everyone's sober and have, and go stand by the exit at 6 p.m. And it's, it's absurd. Wait. There should be an anthropologist just sitting there studying people. Like, Dude, right? people that are crossing, line. walking out, it, falling it over It was literally yes. it's Anthony absurd. Davis. I saw an Anthony Davis, like a, a literally somebody leaving in a wheelchair. They were so drunk yeah, and like just hunched over. I always joke, like, I don't, I don't like to go in the pool. Like, think of how many people, like, oh, that pool is radioactive. That pool is people contaminated, take man. The, the one time we were there, we had a table, and that the, the DJ Zed was playing, and he was right there, and somebody puked in the pool. They blew the whistle. They cleaned it out. They did one little flush, and then they blew the whistle, yeah. and everyone went back in. I'm like, I'm not going in there. No. Why the Dude, hell would the you go in there? puke is the worst of the problems. Like, <laughs> I've said it before. How could a bachelor party of 15 have 400 Miller Lights and not one guy gets out? Not, not one. <laughs> they just, they literally, but this, the chemicals outrageous. are beyond insane. Like, that's, that's what it thing. is. It, it, there is, there is, <laughs> is, you know, horse tranquilizer in there. They're, they're using chemicals. Yeah. That you they might as well no just put like, syringes in that pool. Horse yeah. syringes. It really is. You, like, you see, a, a, you're right, a group of 15 middle-aged guys with board shorts that were cool 15 years ago in there. Yeah. 
and yeah. none of them leave. You're like yeah. that. And they are legitimately. The server brings trays of yeah. forty light beers, <laughs> and these guys don't budge for six hours. Yeah. It's I've insane. Witnessed it. I've witnessed I it. Have it is, too. it I've most seen it. Is... <laughs> I, I did it in the Bahamas. I told you there are twenty of us in the Bahamas at an all inclusive. Like the, I'm pretty sure we left, and they just shut the place down for two weeks. <laughs> Hazmat suits. They were, they were flying scientists in from Europe. They're like, go study yeah. that, because there were 20 guys that didn't leave for three days, and something doesn't add up. I mean, if you, it, it, I, I would appreciate some honesty. Just put your hand up and say, I'm pissing in the pool. I'm, right. I'm doing it. You know what I mean? Because don't bluff it and act like, don't be like, hey, man, oh, that, that guy yeah. never gets out of the pool. You're one of them, too. We've all done it. I know. But put it, your arm up and be honest. I, I, I wouldn't do that. I'm a, I have claws. I wouldn't personally. Uh, oh, so you're telling me you've never put in the four-hour shift and not gotten out of the – dude, I will admit I've done it numerous times. <laughs> I've <laughs> – I've done it too, but yeah, I'm I'm talking. Right. all right, three pack around the table. Uh, I've done it have. within smaller parties as well. <laughs> it's so <laughs> ridiculous. It's so <laughs> ridiculous. Let's just call a spade a spade. Yeah. It's all like every a hot tub. <laughs> We're gonna need some right? more tranquilizer. I am here. that guy. Yeah. Are you just calling yeah. it a a hot tub? Is that what you're saying? Right. Like an intimate hot tub? Cannonball right into Six the hot people tub. There. I'm oh. just saying, like if it's a trek, uh, it's well, anyway, also, we got... if it's a long day, there's a lot of sun. You, yeah, you just get lazier. Dude, you're I mean, tired. Yeah. It's, it's absurd. <laughs> All right, Overdrive brought to you by FanDuel. I'm sure they're proud of this. Yeah. Uh, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Mike Johnson coming up. Does Dallas have some life? Is it possible? We'll see. We'll get you an update on the semis going into the World Championships as well from Johnny. Duffy's on the show today. Josh Cloak on What's Up with TFC. Scotty Mitchell on the Jays in Minnesota. Dear Hazy B in a couple of hours. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. The 2023 Men's IIHF World Hockey Championships are on TSN 1050. Canada has done it! Saturday morning, semifinal action, Canada, Latvia. Coverage begins at 7 on TSN 1050. Champions live here. Now, back to Overdrive with Hayes, Noodles, and the O-Dog. All right, Dear Hazy B returns in a couple of hours going into the weekend. Beautiful weekend up here. And I guess we'll have more uh, of the third round of the Stanley Cup playoffs with the Dallas Stars surviving. Boston Celtics surviving last night, too. So Miami's starting to get yeah. a little bit nervous. I don't care what Jimmy Butler's saying. Like, Butler, I think, might believe it in himself. Does everyone else believe it? Like, no team has ever come back from down 0-3 in NBA history. That'd be something, man. That would be something. That is not the, what you want to be remembered for, dude. Right? If they win in if they win in Miami, it's over. That's as simple as that. Seems that it's way. Over. Yeah. Seems that way. They'd come back and absolutely pummel. They might Flush be a double them. digit favorite for Game yes. Seven back in Boston. They really might. Probably deservedly so. Um, so yeah, we got that cooking in the NBA and in the NHL. And the World Championships continue with the uh, Canadians into the semifinals. We head overseas now, catch up with our TSN hockey analyst. Here's Mike Johnson. How are we feeling, Johnny, about Canada's chances? They're going to possibly medal at a minimum here, but you like their chances of winning gold or what? I like their chance of getting to the gold medal game, AZ. I mean, they're playing Latvia, who they beat 6 nothing in the first game of this tournament. Now, it's been a crazy, as you guys remember, on the Tuesday night, it got even crazier uh, when they beat Sweden on Thursday night, but they're not in Riga anymore. They're in Tampere. There, there is no crowd of maniac Latvian fans supporting them. So, yeah, I mean, I think fully expect Canada to play the U.S. in the gold medal game, and you would think Canada would have a good chance of winning, but the U.S. has been by far the best team in this tournament by, by like a considerable margin. They, they've dominated everyone, so um, Canada will be hard-pressed, but I, I would expect them to get to the gold medal game. Okay, we'll take that, yeah. right? I mean, considering, yeah. yeah, the way they're built, like everyone's come in here with reasonable expectations. It's not exactly, you know, the 76 Canada team we're talking about here. It's it's kind of <laughs> grinders and, and battler, and they're getting goaltending. Yeah, Montebon's right? been good. Really Correct, good. Johnny? Yeah, he, he's been the story. Like, 
you know, every time this tournament comes around, you're like, who's having a great run here that maybe could catapult them to next year? Noodles and Montembeau, yeah. who was no good two years ago, played really pretty well for Montreal this year, um, has been the number one goalie since day one. He's certainly lived up to that billing. The tournament voted today. He might be, he might win best goalie of the tournament. He's been that good. So, and they needed it because, as you guys mentioned, they don't they don't have a ton of offense. They don't dominate games by any stretch. It's uh, it's a grind, and they need good goaltending. He's given it. So he's been the one true standout, along maybe with Mackenzie Weaker. But other than those two guys, it's just been sort of a collection of of guys chipping in uh, enough to to get to where they want to go. And yeah, like, they're likely to play for a gold medal, which you would always take and and kind of take your chances when you get to that spot. With Mike Johnson, our TSN hockey analyst, I heard you on first up talking about you know the buzz about the Leafs over there and how you know regardless of what people say you know they still they're all captivated by the Leafs and this idea that there's change happening but I'm curious if what you're picking up on from people around the NHL that are over there is that they believe there's dysfunction within the Leafs ranks because that's what we're trying to figure I don't see it that way I know it was a sloppy mm-hmm. end but I, I don't see dysfunction yet what what are you hearing from people over there, and is that what people are seeking out? Do they want to see dysfunction return to Toronto? Well, I, I think people want to jump to that because people like to latch on to bad things happening in Toronto because there's probably an, jealousy is not the right word, but you know, like people like to hate on Toronto because they are popular, because they get a lot of attention, because they are celebrated even though they haven't won a Stanley Cup. You know, all the obvious reasons. And so I think people are quick to say, yeah, like, what a mess. They're going right back to the Ballard days. I'm like, that's not it. The only thing that people are curious about and sort of like the chatter amongst the NHL people here is, you know, what really was the, the relationship between Brandon Shanahan and Kyle Dubas like? Like, it seemed outwardly like they were very much on the same page, very supportive of each other. Shanny admitted he wanted them back. But I think, you know, as far as what was the actual working relationship, was Brandon Shanahan more involved in what was going on on the ice than maybe we were led to believe or maybe than we it perceived as being that I think is kind of the conversation piece. Like, you know, how much is Shannon involved? What, you know, why would, why would Kyle ask for more autonomy? Like those kind of questions more so than the Leafs are a mess right now. I, I think most people, the NHL people are like, yeah, the Leafs are going to go through some changes, but given how talented they are and the lack of success for so many years, probably makes sense that they go through some changes at this point. Johnny, the big talk is two things. The rumblings of the core four coming back, Mm -hmm. would that happen on your watch? And would the coach be coming back on your watch? Yeah, I mean, I heard like they, they, was it Shani made the call to the core four and said, you know, the intention is to bring everyone back. I don't, I don't know why he, well, maybe I know why with Austin and Willie, he does that because he wants to sign them, but you know, I don't know if they need to have that assurance. Like, and I, and I guess I'd say this though: um, I would, I would not guarantee that all four guys would come back. I would have to see what kind of trades are out there. I'm not trading one of them just to trade one of them. I, you know, I have to get something that would be appropriate sure. value. But I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call and say there's no way you guys are getting traded. I mean, I think I'd say, you know what? As Kyle Dubas said himself, I will look to any avenue that I can to improve this team. And if that means trading somebody that is one of those guys, then that's what I would do. Uh, as far as the coach, it, you know, coaches, it seems so much about like the interpersonal relationship and the vision between the GM and the coach. Um, so I would kind of take the same tack. Like I would not guarantee Sheldon Keith would be back, but I, I would explore who else is out there and what might be better. Um, but he certainly has been good enough that I'm not firing him or replacing him just because. I don't think that's not, not, not necessary just yet. Johnny, if you believe now, if a new manager comes in and wants to put his stamp on this team, and it's not just with a, a couple you know, roster mm-hmm. moves, but it's more about the, I don't know, the, the country club attitude or you know what's perceived at that music during practice, all of that type of stuff. It, wouldn't you have to replace the coach if you wanted to do you know, the whole kind of top to bottom, hey, we want to revamp. And, and culture is the wrong word because I'm not saying there's a bad culture there. If anything, it's it's been a, a very good yeah. cu- culture, a positive noodles, culture. It's, it's also not was what Johnny just said, just because 
right. under him. They won one round. But but <laughs> what I where I'm going is is if you want to, you know, maybe it's their style of play. You know, possession. They love to play possession. I get that. But you know, even the, the top possession teams are just between fifty and fifty five percent. That means. You know, forty-five percent. You're giving the puck away. You got, you got to go get it. Like there might have to be a, a different voice from the coaching staff to play a little bit different style that that is more successful potentially in the playoffs. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Now, I mean, I think certainly if they were to trade a player, that would go a long way into disrupting sort of the the, the degree of comfort. That they, right. like, I'm not going to talk about culture or lack of, you know, right, but maybe right. just the kind of comfort that they have in their situation. Um, but the easiest and most um, obvious way to do it is to change the coach. You bring a new coach in, and I don't know if you guys, like I played on, what, Tampa replaced the coach midseason, Phoenix replaced the coach midseason when I was there. So twice I had a coach leave middle of the year. And uh, a new coach is, 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 the best way to revamp everything relationships are start over roles, responsibilities, all the norms of how a team operates, whether it's travel, whether it's music during practice, 